Hello, this is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman from the Jewish Executive Learning Network and BregmanSuccess.com. Uh, late at night, um, after Shabbos, I received a fantastic question by email that uh, I thought I'd reply to in video format because I think it's something that'll be of benefit to pretty much everyone. And it's a very common question. The question is one of motivation. I get this question a lot. People at ask me this way or that way, they'll say, hey, you seem very motivated, or how do you stay motivated, or you often leverage for us Torah ideas and wisdom to benefit our lives and become more successful. Give us some Torah ideas about inspiration, motivation, how to stay inspired, and specifically, I'm often asked, what is a better form of inspiration? Is it that when you're excited and inspired to, to do the right thing, internally because you feel it on your own. Sometimes people say, hey, uh, if I don't get anything done, if it's not for external pressure, I remember in my high school in South Florida growing up, somebody had in the yearbook as their senior quote, something that said something like, if it's not for the last minute, I get nothing done. That was the quote he felt that most uh, epitomized himself. So question becomes like, which is better to be externally motivated, internally motivated, Share with me some Torah on this. So I have something nice to share with you. I first heard this Devar Torah from a big Rosh Hashiva, a big Torah scholar and head of a yeshiva in Miami Beach, maybe in about the year 2002, Harab Yochanan Zweig Shlita. I heard this answer from him. I don't think I've shared this Torah insight with anybody, I don't think since, but why not? Enjoy it. So it's been in my head since then. Person has to keep learning, so you'll always be armed with good Torah. Uh, when you'll need it 15 plus years later, okay? So here we go. I'm going to direct you now to something we call Pirkei Avos. Pirkei Avos is a work of the sages from the Talmudic era uh, containing information that God gave the Jewish people on Mount Sinai. Pirkei Avos means ethics of the fathers, okay? So here's what you have. There's a Mishnah, a teaching in chapter 2, Mishnah 1, and the Mishnah says, and now we're going to dive into the sources. It says, it says, and I'll do it, I'll read it inside here. It says, Consider three things. And you won't come to do a sin. And what are the three things? It's good advice from Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, the author, the one who redacted the Mishnah. What are the three things to consider and look into and you're not going to come to sin? He says, know what is above you. Uh, he says, look in three things. And what are, okay, what is above you? A watchful eye. That's like God is watching you an attentive ear, that Hashem is listening to everything you say, and that all your deeds are recorded in a book. Remember these three things and you won't sin. Well, that's pretty good. What's What's above you? That's Hashem. And that and the, the three things are specifically an eye, and raya, an eye that sees you, an ear that's shemas, that's listening to everything you say, and then kol ma'asecha besefer nechtovim, that everything you do is written in the book. So he's saying, look, if you know that everything you're doing, God's watching, that everything that you, you say, God is listening, is being recorded, and, uh, and that all your deeds are being recorded in a book, and at the end of your life, you're going to have to be accountable, that's a good formula not to sin. So that's chapter 2, Mishnah 1 of Pirkei Avos. Okay, stay with me here. Now, the first Mishnah of chapter 3, same position, but one chapter later, seems to say something very similar. This is in the name of Akavia ben Mahalalel, a different rabbi of the Mishnah. He says something very similar. He says, also in this Mishnah, he says, same thing, sounds similar. Consider three things and you're not going to come to sin. So it sounds very similar to what you heard from Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi a chapter ago. So why is he giving all of a sudden another list of the same th uh, same thing. Consider three things and you won't sin. But he has a different list. Listen to what his list does. His list is, and I'll just read it in English for the sake of time. Um, he says, know where you come from and where you're going and before whom you're one day going to have to give a din for cheshben, a justification and a reckoning and accounting of your life. He says, where do you come from? From a putrid drop. In other words, you're going to, you come from a little seed from your, from your father, uh, from your mother, an egg. You come from nothing. Know where you come from. That you come from something so small. Know where you're going to a place of dust and worms and maggots. That means the grave. And before whom you're going to give din v'cheshbin. You're going to give an accounting and a reckoning and explanation for what you did in your life. Before God, the Holy One, blessed be He. So those are the two. 
So the Mafarsh in the commentaries ask, like, what really is the is the difference over here? Obviously, it's not that each person needs to one up the other with a better answer to the question of consider three things and you won't sin. So what is really the essential difference between one list and the other? That's really the question. So I once heard a pshat, an explanation that says like this. The answer comes out like this. And that is that there's two different basic mahalchem pathways which can motivate a person to do the right thing. One is when the motivation comes from an external source, something outside of you, and one is internal. And that's, according to this approach, the difference between these two missions, what they're describing. When Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, Rebbe, says in chapter two, Mishnah one, consider three things and you're not gonna come to sin, what is above you? A watchful eye, like God is like the video camera. He's watching you from the outside. So, you know, pay attention. Somebody's watching you. You won't do the wrong thing. An attentive ear, God's listening to you. Everything you're saying is being recorded and could be held against you in the court of law, so to speak. And then all your deeds are being recorded in a book. It's like somebody's watching you and taking notes of everything you do. So from that approach, when there's an external pressure on top of you to do the right thing, you're more likely to not mess up. That's the first idea. And that's the approach he's saying, sort of an external motivation to not sin. And then, according to this approach, Rav Zweig speaks out, then the next Mishnah, which is in chapter 3, Akavi ben Mahalalel, when he says three things, it's not that you're not going to sin because someone, in this case Hashem, God, is watching you. It's because inherently you know what you are and who am I that I'm going to go against God. And that's what this mission is saying. And we're, we're, no, where you come from, a putrid drop, a little nothing. In other words, not because I'm not going to sin because somebody's watching me. It's like, I am nothing. I'm small and insignificant. I'm going to go against God. It's from within to the place of worms, dust, maggots. Again, who am I that I'm going to take my body and just satisfy every, every pleasure it wants, even if it goes against God's will? My body's nothing. In the end, it's going to be nothing. I am nothing. It's not because being listened to and watched. It's inherently what if I think I am already. And again, at the end, you're going to have to give a reckoning before God. So the first mission in chapter two is more, hey, don't sin. I'm watching you, listening to everything you say, everything you do, everything you, everything, everything comes out of your mouth, wherever you go, taking good notes. That's one approach. What's the other approach? Another approach is it's not because you're watching me. It's because inherently, who am I? And what am I? Me, I need, ma, I need, we say in Hebrew, to go against you. So that's a different, those are two different mahalakim, external and internal motivation. So the question becomes, which is better, which is worse, which is more healthy? Well, obviously we would say for starters, look, number one, you don't want to go against Hashem either way. And there's times that you might be more motivated internally or externally. You might be more motivated to lose weight or become successful because you believe it's good for you and that'll motivate you. Sometimes your taxes are due and you have a bill that has to be paid, and it's a pressure from the outside that gets you to get done what you need to do. But Rav Zweig said something very interesting, and I thought you'd like this. Uh, he said that we know that the healthiest and ideal and best is when it comes from within. And what was his approach? He brings a Gemara in Tractate Brachos, and I have a Talmud over here, uh, in page 5a of Tractate Brachos. It gives a three-part strategy how to defeat your Yetzir Hara, your evil inclination. It says, try to motivate yourself to do the right thing. It says, if you feel like doing the wrong thing to motivate, to do the good. It says, do Yasu Batayra, engage in Torah study. And if that doesn't make you feel like doing the right thing, if that didn't work, take stronger medicine. It says, do it. It says, Yikra Kriya Shema, recite the Shema. And if that doesn't work, what should you do? V'im lab yiskar loy yaman Remember, you're going to die one day. Remember the day of death. So the Rashiva explained a very nice approach. He said the Torah here is laying out for you that the best is when it is intrinsically, inherently, you're motivated to do the right thing and not sin because you inherently know it's the right thing to do. When you study Torah, you realize that God's instructions are good for you and for your pleasure. So that's the best. And if learning Torah, when you're tempted to do wrong, doesn't remind you that it's really for your own benefit, what should you do? Then it says Shema. Why is that a little bit, already moving from internal to more external? When you say Shema, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, you're saying, Ich bin, well, it's Yiddish, I'm talking Yiddish now. I am a servant of Hashem, and I'm going to do what my commander created, uh, that created me, wants for me. It's already moving towards external a little bit. You follow what I'm trying to say? 
And then the last one is, remember the Yom Misa, if it's not enough to learn Torah and realize that God's instructions, when you see what he says, it's good for you and for your pleasure, that's not enough. Remember, you're a God soldier and you're on a mission. That's Shema, Shema Yisro. And if that's not enough, it says, Ve'im lav, if that's not enough to get the job done, uh, Yisro Le'yam Misa. Remember the day of that. The one day you're going to have to give an accounting before Hashem as to how you lived your life and everything you did. And if that's not strong enough motivation to do the right thing, I don't know. We don't know how to help you. Bottom line, bottom line of this idea for all the people who ask me is, look, bottom line, do the right thing. Do the right thing. If it's because of external motivation, internal motivation, different things at different times, that gets a job done for you. You do what you need to do to live up to what you're supposed to, certainly spiritually, in your obligations with other people, and fulfill your potential. Sometimes you need to borrow from the one approach, sometimes from the outside approach, sometimes from the internal approach. Do what it takes. But the best from the Torah perspective is the extent to which you could be motivated to do the right thing because you know it is good for you. Anyway, hope you like this super late night video that I'm recording whenever you watch it. This is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman of the Jewish Executive Learning Network and BregmanSuccess.com. Please share this video with other people if you found it interesting and subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the little red button so I can continue to schmear you and take care of you with good Tyra. Have a beautiful night, whatever time or day you watch the video. Late. Bye.